Hi guys, um, it's your girl Afro Story. I'm back. I know it's been a while since you guys last uh, saw or heard from me. Actually, you can't see me now because um, <laughs> I just record the audio for this. But anyway, um, I um, wanted to give you guys a quick update about me. Um, I've started my doctoral program in anthropology, so it's been sort of it's been um, a, a major shift in the amount of time that I have to do YouTube videos, even though um, hopefully I'll be able to crank out some YouTube videos that I've actually been recording over the summer. So I'll give y'all a little bit of back matter on what I've been doing for the past two and a half months that I've been out of the loop and I've been on a temporary hiatus. Um, but I did want to share with you guys an article that I found um, online that I, I was very surprised to know. Um, this connection. This may not be news for some of you guys, but it was news for me and for some of you other women out there, especially you mothers that have young girls. Um, I wanted to share this article with you. So I'm going to read it really quickly and uh, just put it out there for you guys to, I guess, marinate over and, and contemplate about. So I got this article from um, uh, the site called NoBreastCyst.com. And I looked in their article archive list. You can look at their their um, title bar, which is on the left-hand side. And um, on that list, I was able to find an article that was entitled, uh, Shampoos Contain Large Clinical Doses of Estrogen That Will Cause Breast Cysts. And um, the subtitle of that is called, Early Puberty Linked to Shampoos Containing Estrogen. And this is taken from the New Scientist Journal, and so I'll just begin with reading it. The synopsis says, some shampoos popular with African Americans contain high enough doses of estrogen to push young girls into early puberty. I'm going to read that again. Some shampoos popular with African Americans contain high enough doses of estrogen to push young girls into early puberty. All right, y'all. So I know a lot of us have talked about, you know, how our how our young girls are overdeveloped at a very young age. Some of us blame it on, uh, you know, the hormones and the food, um, you know, what have you. This is uh, positing that shampoos is also linked to that early development in puberty. So I'll continue reading. Unbeknown to many parents, a few hair products, especially some marketed to black people, contain small amounts of hormones that could cause premature sexual development in girls. The evidence that hair products containing um, estrogens cause premature puberty is largely circumstantial, and the case is still unproven. So they're saying that more research needs to be done on this topic. I'll continue reading. But Ella Toombs, acting director for the Office of Cosmetics and Colors at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, told the new scientist, and she quotes, no amount of estrogen is considered safe and can be included in an over-the-counter product, end quote. Under FDA regulations, over-the-counter products containing hormones are drugs and thus require specific approval. However, there appears to be a gray area regarding products marketed before 1994. Remember that date. All right, if you guys want to do research on the products that you all may be using, remember that date. Prior to 1994, there's a great area on products that are quote-unquote labeled as drugs, which are now in the market. All right? The FDA failed to respond to a request to clarify the position. At least five companies are still making hormone-containing hair products, a source within the industry who preferred not to be named. All right, I read that last sentence, last sentence again. At least five companies, five anonymous companies, are still making hormone-containing hair products, a source within the industry who preferred not to be named. And this was told to the new scientist. All right? So there's five companies out there that we don't know about. We could be using their hair care products, or we may have in the past used their hair care products, or we may have been using it on our loved ones. They still contain this hormone, and we as consumers have no idea who they are. I don't know about y'all, but I don't feel comfortable knowing that. 
Anyway, throughout the West, girls are tending to reach puberty earlier. This has been blamed on everything from improved diet to environmental contaminants, but African American girls are developing even earlier than their white counterparts. Read that one more time. African American girls are developing even earlier than their white counterparts. About half of black girls in the U.S. began developing breast or pubic hair by age eight compared with just 15% of white girls. One study has found this out to be. In Africa, girls enter puberty much later, regardless of their socioeconomic status. Y'all, it's very important that we understand this, that we understand that black women, black girls in the United States are developing at a much earlier rate than our African sisters on the continent. All right. And we're developing at a faster rate than our white sisters within the United States. There is something that is specific to our condition that needs to be become more transparent, become less obscure, become out in the open that we have not been privy to, that we don't know about, that we should know about. And we need to become more active in learning about it. All right. Let me see if there's anything else here. All right, it says that big discrepancy may be explained, at least in part, by the more frequent use of hormone containing hair products among African Americans. I'm doing a long time here. All right, 650. I'm about to do a part two to this. Among African Americans, says Chandra Tiwari, former chief of pediatric endocrinology at Brook Army Medical Center in Texas. She quotes, I believe that the frequency of sexual precocity, I don't know if I'm saying that right, precocity can be reduced simply if children do not use those hair care products, he says. Sorry, I was a guy. (laughs) My bad, Brooke. All right, so he's basically saying that the frequency of sexual precocity, someone looked that up, it's P-R-E-C-O-C-I-T-Y, can be reduced simply if children do not use hair products. I'm assuming it means sexual development. The products are sold as shampoos or treatments to deep condition dry, brittle hair. The labels usually state that they contain placenta, hormones, or estrogen, although not all products that make such claims contain active hormones. It's important that we know this. While new scientist inquiries suggest such products are no longer sold in Europe, Many are still available worldwide over the internet. So ladies, we need to be proactive in what we not only buy in person at some of the retail stores or grocery stores or whole food markets, but also what we and our children purchase online. It's very important that we monitor what type of business interactions, business um, and networking that we do online. All right, continue reading. And they remain popular among African Americans. I mean... You guys, it's no news to us that, you know, the cosmetic and beauty industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And a large percentage of that is catered toward the African-American female demographic. I mean, there's no surprise there. So, you know, we need to be very proactive in knowing how we factor into this industry. I'll continue reading. A small study published earlier this year by Su Ting Lee of the Child Health Institute in Seattle suggests that nearly half of African American parents use such products and that most also use them on their children. Do y'all understand this? This is shocking. This is shocking. I mean, maybe some people may not have a problem with um, sexual development at a very early age, but you guys, this is an issue. We are developing at a very early age because of unnatural things that we are putting on our bodies or putting, yeah, putting on our bodies or on the bodies of our children. It goes on to read, for other ethnic groups, the figure is under 10%. Tiwari told New Scientist that he has carried out a bigger as yet unpublished survey of 2,000 households that confirm these findings. So that's the end of part one. I'm almost at my 10 minutes. So stay tuned, guys, for part two. This gets really interesting. Peace.